Here we have all the parts that have been uh, cleaned. You'll notice there's no trace of old lubrication in there. And now I'm uh, ready to begin reinstalling the new seals and O-rings. Once I have the shaft guide cleaned out, I'm ready to reinstall two new shaft seals that come with the service kit. What I want to do with those seals though is I want to take a little dab of uh, light motor oil or silicone and I want to just rub it between my fingers and get a light coating of that onto the seals. It makes it a lot easier to put them in, to, to reinstall them. Now these seals also have two sides. There's the spring side which has the groove and there's a side with the writing on it. I want to install these in facing in opposite direction and the first one that I want to put in I want to have the writing facing up. So I'm just going to slide it on an angle to press it in here and push it down. Um, I'm going to make some room to get the second seal in because it is a tight fit. So I'm just going to take this uh, Allen key tool and, and just push this first seal down all the way. Now the second seal I'm going to have the writing facing down so the groove is going to be facing up. And again I'm going to just take that and I'm going to angle it in on the corner and I'm just going to work it in, pressing it into the shaft guide, like so. Okay, here I have my uh, pinion assembly and clutch assembly parts all cleaned and ready to go back together. So what I need to start with is to, um, to take my clutch housing and install the new O-ring around the ridge here. Once the O-ring is ready, I want to make sure that I have both of these pins still in the clutch housing. Now I'm going to take the clutch housing, turn it upside down, and I'm going to take my main seal. My main seal has two sides to it. It has a flat writing side, and on the opposite side it has a, a groove going around the center. I want to place this seal in the clutch housing so the groove is facing down and I can see the writing on the flat side as I put it in. I'm going to drop it down in there and then I'm going to take my uh, seal tool. Uh, I'm going to take the blunt end of the seal tool and I am going to press the seal into its raceway. I could feel it snap in and then I'll turn this around and I'll make sure that I see that that seal is all the way up. There are no gaps and then I'm ready to put the clutch in. Okay, once, once the seal is seated in the clutch housing, you'll take your clutch and you'll notice that there's a pin slot cut in one end of the clutch. We want to align that slot with one of the holes ground out in the clutch housing. So carefully take the clutch and turn it so that, that those holes line up to make a complete circle to accept the small clutch dowel. Once you uh, get the pin to go into the hole, Take your seal tool, take the blunt end, and just tap the clutch lightly to make sure that it's seated all the way up against that main seal. Once that's done, we're ready to take the shaft guide, if, if you have a two-piece shaft guide. Um, take the shaft guide and slide it in the bottom of the clutch. That's the side that we just uh, inserted the pin in. Lead with the the tapered end. There's, there's an end that has um, a slightly reduced diameter. We're going to stick that end in first from the bottom until that little reduced diameter pokes through the seal. Now we're ready to take the, uh, the lock ring, place the lock ring in the groove that it fits and turns on, and now we can take the shaft guide and drop the shaft guide right in. Once we have uh, this assembly back in the tool block, we're ready to take our main bearing and our pinion and we'll slide the main bearing right onto the pinion and then we'll screw the pinion assembly back into the clutch housing. We're going to screw this down counterclockwise remembering that that's left-handed thread that's in there. We'll place the allen key through the holes drilled in the pinion and then using the pinion wrench we'll tighten it up in a counterclockwise direction. Nice and firm but not too tight. And there we have our uh, pinion assembly ready to go back into the reel. Before I slide the uh, gear assembly back onto the reel, I like to take a couple of drops of oil. This is just light motor oil. And 
put a few drops between the two rubber seals that helps lubricate the shaft as it's uh, traveling up and down through the shaft guide. Okay, now that the pinion is um, reassembled, I'm ready to lubricate it and reinstall it in the body. So I'm going to take some, some Z-Lube and I'm going to put some Z-Lube all around the main bearing, just like that. Get a good coating of it on there so that the main bearing is well lubricated. And then I'm going to take uh, my real body and I'm going to reinstall a new O-ring that grabs onto the lock nut when we tighten the clutch assembly in place. I'm going to get that installed and get it right in the groove right at, down at the bottom. Now before I install the clutch housing back into the real body, those two pins that we talked about that go into the clutch housing, you're going to see corresponding slots ground in the top of the real body to accept and lock in with those pins. But before I slide that in, I want to take some, some grease and I want to just, just a little dab of grease and I want to kind of fill those cavities. That's going to help the pin slide in and it's also going to help to protect the O-ring as it slides past those grooves. So those grooves are cut at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock as you hold the reel like this. So I'm going to try to line up my clutch housing in the same manner where I can see the pins are in that 12 and 6 o'clock position. And I'm going to just put this in until it won't turn anymore, then I'm going to rotate the shaft guide towards me until I feel it click in, and then I'll be able to just screw the knurled ring down tight all the way. And that's my uh, clutch housing and shaft guide assembly all ready to go. Okay, now I'm ready to um, install a new cover seal over the shaft of the main gear. Um, before I do that, I'm going to take a couple of drops of oil and I'm just going to put it on the inside of the seal. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to rotate this seal along the threads of the shaft until it comes in contact with the body itself and can't go anymore. And then I'm going to take the other end of the seal tool um, and I'm going to press the seal down just like this you know, rotating slightly till that seal is flush. Once that seal is flush with the housing, I'm good to go. Now I'm ready to take my uh, gear cover assembly and reinstall the cover O-ring into the groove. So this is a slightly shorter O-ring, so I need to stretch it around here. And because I'm stretching it, I like to keep the last, um, as I get the uh, O-ring in, I like to keep it up like this and then I'll just take a screwdriver or something round and I'll, I'll circle around once or twice to make sure that I uh, distribute the stress evenly around that O-ring. And then I want to make sure that the O-ring is pressed all the way inside and that it's not going to get pinched. So I just kind of go around with the tool here and make sure that the O-ring is fully seated in that groove. It's harder to see this on a black reel, so you have to really be careful. Okay, now I'm ready to um, reinstall the gear, the main gear, into the reel. And incidentally, I always want to put my pinion gear in before I put the main gear in. I don't want to do this in reverse. It's very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my, um, my main gear until the little bushing, the little bearing that engages the traverse guide is at about 7 o'clock down at the bottom. And then I'm going to just hold my reel in my left hand and I'm going to align the traverse guide with that little bearing and then the reel should snap right in place. The cover should snap right in place. And I'm going to twist my um, shaft guide to make sure that the gears are meshing. I don't want to screw this cover back in unless the gears are properly meshing or I could ruin the gear. And now I'm going to take uh, my 5 ths Allen key and I'm just going to tighten these screws back up and I'm good to go on to the next step. Once I get the handle back on and I make sure that everything is turning nice and smoothly, 
I'm ready for the, uh, the rest of the lubrication for the reel. Um, I like to take some Real X and I like to get a couple of drops on the main gear on that little bearing. You can do this either now or when you have it apart. And I also like to get some in the two bearings on the Traverse Guide to keep everything rolling along nice and smoothly. Um, once that's done, I'm ready for the, uh, the Z-Lube. And what I want to do is um, fill this upper cavity here around the pinion like so. And then I'll turn the reel again to get that, you know, onto the main gear, help smooth things out. And then I like to put a drop inside the, uh, the traverse guide, inside that little S-curve. And then I'll take some and put it along the two rails that the, uh, the bearings are rolling along. And again, once I have that done, I'm ready to put the, uh, the side cover back on now. But before I do that, I have to make sure that I install the O-ring on there. It's the same as the gear cover. I just want to slide this O-ring in place, make sure that it's, uh, it's not sticking out anywhere and that it won't get pinched. And then I could cover the reel back up. Just push the cover in place. Tighten the nut as tight as I could get it. And I'm good to go.